Rogers Radio Show. Yes, folks, it's the Roy Rogers Radio Show for the whole family. Adventure, suspense, mystery, and music. Starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West, with Pat Brady, the Mellow Men, and an all-star cast. And now, here to greet you with a song and a story are Roy and Dale. I want to go back to my little grass shack in Kealakiku, Hawaii. I want to be with all the Connies and Wahinis that I knew long ago. Good evening, folks. Welcome once again to the whole family. We actually have three songs for you tonight that we call our Hawaiian medley. And our story is about an interesting situation that developed when Dale and Pat and I were returning from a vacation in the island. We had a wonderful time in Honolulu, and we weren't in any special hurry to get home. So we decided to take a small English freighter, one of those cargo boats that carries a few passengers and takes life slow and easy as it makes its way through the beautiful blue waters of the Pacific. This one had started out from Hong Kong, and we boarded her at Honolulu. It was nice and warm the first night out, but it was slightly overcast. Some clouds had blown in from the west, and the moon was hidden. So it was kind of dark. But that didn't stop Dale and me from taking a walk around the deck. We were sort of moseying along, breathing in the good old salt air, when all of a sudden... found him yet, Roy? No, they're still looking. There's the steward, Roy. Maybe he can give us some information. Yeah. Oh, Stuart! Stuart! Oh, yes, sir. Oh, it's Mr. Rogers and Miss Evans. And Mr. Brady, yes, sir. What can I do for you? Oh, we were just wondering if you know who the person was that fell overboard. No, sir. It looks pretty hopeless, doesn't it? Yes, I'm afraid so. I wish I'd gotten a better look at him. Oh, was it you who saw him fall? Ah, oh, miss. But it was so dark. All I could tell was that he was a man. He was wearing a white dinner jacket and had a fedora hat on. I remember thinking it was strange that he should be wearing a, a hat with tropical evening clothes, especially a fedora. Stuart! Mr. Winslow, where are... Oh, there you are. Yes, sir. A wonderful... Oh, hello, Miss Evans. Mr. Rogers. Mr. Uh, Brady. Hi, hello, Captain. Captain. Mr. Winslow, are you positive the man was not a member of the crew? Oh, yes, sir. I was just telling these people he was a passenger, sir. He was wearing... I know, I know, I know. A white jacket and a fedora hat, you told me. But the white jacket might have been part of a uniform, mightn't it? Aye, sir. But the hat? Well, yeah. I want a full written report from you. Yeah, of course, sir. I'll write it at once. Ahoy! Captain! Aye! Small boat returning, sir. We found something. Well, what is it? A hat, sir. The fedora the hat. <laughs> attention. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Now, I shall continue calling the passenger list. Uh, Gretel. Gret Gretel. Phillips. Cowan. Burris. They're sitting at table four, sir. Yes, I see. Jack. Brady. Pat Brady. I don't see Mr. Brady, sir. Well, he's around here somewhere, Captain. He isn't the man who fell overboard. Uh, somebody calling me? Mr. Brady? Yeah, that's me, Patrick Aloysius Brady. Hmm, check. Roy Rogers. Here. Dale Evans. Here. Uh, forgive me for doing the obvious, but we must be absolutely systematic about all this. The company and the Coast Guard want a full and complete written report when we reach San Francisco. Well, that's right. Uh, it should be that way. Uh, to continue... Dubrov, Natasha Dubrov. Uh, I am Natasha Dubrov. <laughs> uh, uh, Carlton, Henry Carlton. Uh, 
Henry Carlton. I, I believe Mr. Carlton is in his cabin, sir. Who oh, is he? When he came aboard, he left orders not to be disturbed. He said he would take all his, his meals in his cabin. Mm. When did you see him last? Oh, I should say around supper time, sir, when I took him his tray. Where did he board us? In Manila, sir. I checked him in myself. Yes, yes, I see. Well, Mr. Henry Carlton seems to be the only passenger not present and accounted for. Uh, thank you. That will be all for the present. If I need you for anything further, I'll send word. Meanwhile, I trust this unfortunate accident will not prevent any of you from enjoying your voyage home. Oh, uh, Mr. Rogers. Yes? May I speak to you a moment, please? Sure. Uh, I, I wonder if I may request your help in as much as... We're fortunate enough to have you on board. Why, certainly. It may be that I'll need someone in whom I can place absolute confidence. Someone I know is completely trustworthy. I'll be glad to do anything I can, Captain. Uh, I should like you to accompany me now to Mr. Carlton's cabin. All right. Mr. Carlton! Doesn't look like he's in. But if it's the occupant of that cabin you're looking for, you're wasting your time knocking. He's not in, sir. I just finished turning down his bed for the night, sir. Oh, did you? Well, thank you, stewardess. Uh, Winslow, use your pass key. Aye, aye, sir. After you, Mr. Rogers. Thanks. Well, everything seems to appear to be in... Good order. Are his clothes in the closet, Stuart? I'll see, sir. Yes, sir. All of his clothes seem to be in proper order, sir, except his white dinner jacket, a pair of dock trousers, and, of course, his fedora hat. Captain? Yes? Look over there on the bureau dresser. Hmm? See. Cigarettes, fountain pen, matches from the Tally Ho Club in Manila. One, two... Three, five hundred dollars in American Express traveler's checks. Well, that's strange. It sure is, Captain. Why would a man empty his pockets before going out on deck? Yes, there's something else. What? Here's a note. It was folded up under the last traveler's check. It says, if I were nervier, I would have done this before. The night is dark and the cool waters beyond the railing beckon invitingly. Bon Voyage, signed Henry Carlton. Mr. Winslow. Yes, sir. Notify Sparks that I'll join him in a moment to send a cable to the authorities in San Francisco. Oh, you are, sir. Well, Captain, I'm sure sorry that this had to happen on this trip, but I, I guess there's nothing we can do about it. There's really a great deal we must do about it, Mr. Rogers. Really? I do not believe that Mr. Carlton committed suicide. Oh? Why? Here. Yeah. Look at this note. The cool waters beyond the railing beckon invitingly. So? Oh, maybe Mr. Carlton was a poet. <laughs> Hardly. He's on the passenger list as an American businessman, and he spells railing. R-A-L-I-N-G. Well, that doesn't prove anything. Lots of people misspell certain words. Mm, yes, yes. Perhaps you're right. But there is something more. Yes. I don't think an American wrote this note. Now, listen to it again, Mr. Rogers. If I were nervier, I would have done this before. I don't believe that's an American expression, is it? No, it's not. Nervier. Man books passage at Manila, comes on board and checks in with the steward, takes all of his meals in his room. No one sees him, no one at all. You mean that Mr. Carlton wasn't seen from the time he came on board until he jumped overboard? Well, as far as I can tell, no one except the steward ever saw Mr. Carlton. <laughs> Good Lord, what's that? Come on. Roy, what was that scream? Well, we don't know. It seemed to come from the... Roy! Roy! It's Pat! Roy! Pat, are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right, but look at the steward. He's got a knife in his back. Overboard. People sticking knives in other people's backs. 
I thought you said this was going to be a pleasure trip, Roy. Now, take it easy, Pat, and answer the captain's questions. You said that the Stuart wasn't dead when you got to him. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I was just coming out on deck when I heard him scream. He couldn't have been over 20 feet away. Okay, Pat. Now, try to remember and tell us again what the Stuart said before he died. Well, he... He, he, he sort of breathing hard and moaning, and as near as I could make out, he said, uh, No, Carlton. No, Carlton. Carlton? That's the name of the man who jumped overboard. Yeah. Pat, are you sure he said, No, Carlton? Well, I'm sure of that part of it, all right. He, he said it twice like he was begging this Carlton feller not to kill him. I wish I was as sure of the rest of it. Well, what else did he say? Well, he moaned out something about a moon. A moon? Yeah, a moon of uh, Mindol. Find the moon of Mindol. He said, or, I don't know, something like that. Mindo. Mindu or Mindau or Min something. Maybe it was two names like uh, Min and Dinah. Or... Pat, could it have been Mindanao? Mindanao? Yeah, that's it. The moon of Mindanao. Now, what do you suppose he meant by that? <laughs> Miss Dubrov, I should like to begin by thanking you for cooperating in this way. You see, we are trying to learn why the steward was killed and who's responsible before we arrive in San Francisco. I quite understand, Captain. In this way, it will not be quite so difficult for the innocent. Is that not so? Uh, yes, exactly. I will be most happy to tell you everything I know. But I, I am afraid it will be so little... Mm. Well, uh, first of all, would you mind telling us where you were when uh, we heard the uh, steward scream? When I hear the scream of the poor steward, I'm in my cabin lying down, just as I was when the poor gentleman jumped overboard. Did you know Mr. Carlton, Miss Dubrov, the man who jumped overboard? Yes. I beg your pardon? Oh, forgive me. I'm so used to thinking in Russian. I say, no, I did not know him. I did not see him on board. Miss Dubrov, uh, have you spoken to the wireless operator? Mm, no. Were you informed by the captain or by Miss Evans or Mr. Brady or me that Mr. Carlton committed suicide? Uh, no. Then would you mind explaining how you knew that Mr. Carlton had jumped overboard? But I, I did not know, Mr. Rogers. I, I assumed. The railing around this vessel is easily four feet high. Would we expect extremely difficult for a person to fall overboard. The steward had told me that Mr. Carlton kept to his cabin, that he seemed despondent and ill. It was a natural conclusion, I am afraid. I see. Well, do you think that I had something to do with the death of Mr. Carlton and the steward? I don't know. I'd like to ask you a couple of more questions, if I may, Miss Dubrov. Certainly. Well, where do you live? In Cibuco. Where is Cibuco, Roy? I believe it's a small village on the island of Zamboanga. Uh, that is correct, Mr. Rogers. It's in the Philippines, in the Mindanao chain. Mindanao? Do you have any occupation, Mr. Dubrov? Yes. I have an occupation. Do you mind telling us what it is? Not at all. I am a school teacher. <laughs> Come in. I beg your pardon, sir. Yes, Mr. Chester. What is it? Uh, excuse me, sir, but as first officer, I took the liberty of going over the steward's gear. Just found this, sir. Hmm? What is it? It appears to be an incomplete written report on the gentleman who went overboard, sir. Oh? Give it here. Mm -hmm. No one hundred hours to go. Mr. Rogers, listen to this. Yes, at about zero, one hundred hours, I saw the figure of a man climbing the railing of the ship just outside the dining saloon. Yes? Is that all, Captain? No, that's not all, Miss Evans. But it's the important part. Here, look at the writing. You see the word railing is spelled R-A-L-I-N-G, the same as it was in the suicide note. On my soul, it also appears to be written in the same hand. One thing more, sir. Yes, we found some of Winslow's things wrapped up in this old newspaper. I brought it along. It's got an item on the front page circled and underlined. Let's see that. Hmm. 
moon of Mindanao, stolen. One of the world's rarest and most valuable pearls was stolen yesterday, only two weeks after having been rediscovered. The gem mysteriously disappeared during the Japanese invasion and was accidentally uncovered by a geologist when he... Oh, the rest of it has been torn off. Quite so, sir. Well, what do you make of it, Mr. Rogers? I'm not sure yet, but I'd sure like to get an answer to that cable I sent. Well, I can tell you what occurs to me. Yes? I don't think Carlton's dead. I don't think he ever jumped overboard. I think he's hiding on this ship, and I think Carlton killed Mr. Winslow. Well, you may be right, Captain, but I don't think Mr. Carlton killed the steward. No? No. In the first place, I don't think there ever was a Mr. Carlton. You don't think there ever... Now, why do you say that, Roy? To begin with, when we searched his cabin, we found all of his possessions except one. One? Yeah. The most valuable possession a man in a foreign country has, his passport. Yes, come in. But I was wondering, would you be needing me, sir? I've got to see to the rooms. Oh, and I... of course. Come in, sir. Uh, that'll be all, Mr. Chester. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting so long. Is there anything you can tell us about Mr. Winslow's murder or about Mr. Carlton's death? Oh, faith and saints preserve us, sir. I don't know anything about poor Mr. Winslow. But that Mr. Carlton, he was such a nice man. It seems a pity, sir, that a sweet, kind gentleman, the likes of him, should have been taken that way. Well, just a minute, Stuart. Uh, do you mean to say that you actually saw Mr. Carlton? Oh, of course, sir. I saw him every day since we put out from Manila. I made his bed, sir, and straightened out his room. Oh, my, it was such a pity. And him being such a nice gentleman, too. Well, Mr. Detective, what have you got to say now? <laughs> It's a killer, a thief, and a smuggler, Pat. What makes you think the killer will come in here? To get the moon of Mindanao. The pearl? How do you know it's here? The captain and I found it here two days ago. We hid it until tonight, then we put it back where it was. Put it back? What for? To trap the killer. This is our last night out. We dock in San Francisco in the morning. Whoever's guilty will make one last attempt to get the pearl tonight. Oh, I see. Well, why are you so sure the killer will come here and try to get back the pearl? We just had a cablegram from Manila, Pat. The jewel smugglers who stole the pearl have been picked up. They told us that... Shh! <laughs> just stand right there, Miss Odine. I suppose we could have questioned you until you confessed, but this way was surer and quicker. You're pretty smart for a cowboy, Mr. Rogers. You mean she was in cahoots with a steward? That's right. The gang that stole the pearl in Manila gave it to Mr. Winslow to smuggle into the United States. Miss Odine introduced Winslow to them as Henry Carlton. Then Winslow booked passage on the ship in the name of Henry Carlton. But they were going to double-cross the smuggling syndicate. They were going to keep the pearl of Mindanao all to themselves. Only this little lady decided not to share the pearl with her accomplice. So after Winslow yelled man overboard and pretended that the mythical Mr. Carlton had gone to a watery grave, Miss Odine stabbed him. Then afterward, she couldn't find where he had hidden the pearl. Where was it, Roy? In the top of the fountain pen. Well, criminally, you mean to say that that there steward and this here stewardess went to all the trouble of buying a whole bunch of clothes and things for this Mr. Carlton who didn't even exist? They sure did, Pat. And they might have gotten away with it if they hadn't made two mistakes. They couldn't supply their non-existent Mr. Carlton with a passport, and the steward didn't know how to spell the word railing. Railing? Oh, shucks, that's easy. Everybody knows how to spell railing. R-A-I-L-I-N. Pat, it's R-A-I-L-I-N-G. G? Oh, one of them silent Gs, huh? Oh, Pat Brady. And, folks, that's the whole story of what happened to us the time we took a boat trip from Hawaii to the good old USA. I want to go back to my little grass shack in Kealakaku, Hawaii. I want to be with all the Connies and Wahinis that I knew long ago. 
I can hear guitars a playing on the beach at Hona now. I can hear Hawaiians playing. Home of my Noka Hui Kahale will like a how it won't be long till my ship will go sailing back to Kona. It's a grand old place that's always fair to see. I'm just a little Hawaiian and the homesick island boy. I want to go back to my fish and poi. I want to go back to my little grass shack in Kealakaku, Hawaii. Where the huma huma nuka nuka apawa go swimming by. Where the huma huma nuka nuka apawa go swimming by. Proudly sweeps the rainbow o'er the cliff, borne swiftly by the western gale, while the song of lovers parting breathes, sadly echoes. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Don't, Don't forget, forget how the rain, how the sun shines, and the frown from a rainy day. The Roy Rogers Show is presented each week at this time through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.